Hi Virgo, welcome to your July reading. Okay, so we start off July with you doing very well. Your charms are working, everybody is feeling your vibe, you know. They find this uh, mysterioso thing very sexy. Everyone is intrigued where you've been, what you're doing. Everybody wants the tea. Now, this works really well for a few weeks. And then around the 12th or so, it can backfire. So why is the attraction so strong? because Mars moves into your sign on the 10th. One of the side effects of Mars moving into your sign is that people around you really start clawing at you. They want you for their own. And I don't think you're overly interested in it. I, I just don't get the sense that you want much romantically right now, but they want you. So Mars moves into your sign in about five days and everyone is noticing you, pulling on you, wants to talk to you, wants to make plans with you and you're being a bit reticent which works out well but in about two weeks it can backfire on you and in about two weeks it can seem like maybe you're just being withholding and that's not nice. So, if you're too cool, mid-month, whomever you're trying to pull in with this behavior, it could backfire on you. So just keep that in mind. Now, on the 17th, the North Node will shift to Aries, and we're all a little bit better for it. It's really positive for you. It's about hyper-independence. It's about being vigilant when it comes to your happiness. These characteristics work really well for you. It works really well in terms of work, making money, being recognized, uh, breaking off on your own, doing your own thing, starting a new business, starting a new venture. It's all positive stuff. And it has to do with the most important thing with the North Node moving into Aries for you is just you reevaluating what place and space material things have in your life. Some materials become really important and the day-to-day -day spending, for example, completely stops. So certain aspects of your personality diminish, especially when it comes to spending money, and certain aspects of your personality are heightened now with the North Node. And they have to do with more long-term goals and long-term thinking about your finances. It's a form of growing up um, that's been creeping up on you for at least a few years, but the past six months it's really gotten, you know, it's claws in you. Like, what are we doing about the future? What happens next? We can't just keep winging it. So the North Node moving into Aries is a very welcome energy for you to sort that out and to sort it out pretty quickly. So. There isn't a lot of lag time here, of, you know, not a lot of existential dread, not, you know, six months of, oh, where do I fit with this? No, pretty quickly you're like, okay, this is what needs to be done. This is how we're handling things. Uh, material objects don't mean as much anymore to me. How certain things make me feel means a lot more to me. So having some big realizations around material. Also with the North Node in Aries, if you have too much sway or too much control over a situation or if somebody has too much control or too much sway over you, the North Node moving to Aries balances that out pretty quickly. So if you're on the controlling end, this could be very unpleasant because it forces you to loosen your grip. But if you're on the receiving end of this control, it can be exactly the salvation that you need. You know, it can be that moment where you can get out, 
where you can truly chart your own course and not be under somebody's thumb. Those of you who are, for example, uh, unfortunately in an abusive relationship, a controlling relationship, mid-month July is a great time to get out of that and have the energy post breakup to be able to sustain yourself and not go back. So in terms of leaving really toxic partners, it's a great time. It's a great time. Now, when it comes to money, you have to change how you save and spend. And the only way to really change how you save and spend is to figure out what you really want. If you say that you want things from other people, yeah, okay, you could want respect, you could want attention, you could want affection, but that's not really telling us what you want. That's telling us what you want from other people. What you want may just be a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction. What you want may just be a sense of closeness, but it can be very hard for you to discern the difference between what you think think you want and what you actually want so if you only think you know what you want it's a tendency to like overspend not be able to save and to try to solve your money and solve your problems with casual spending if you will you may even be prompted to make some pretty extreme changes thinking that it will give you some insight or that it will make people want you so much that you don't have to figure out what you want. You can just choose from amongst whoever has chosen you. But where's the living in that? Sure, it's convenient, but where's the agency in that? So, Virgo season is not that far away and astrologically it would be very very smart to take up an entirely new direction and basically rebrand yourself you know who is this virgo who is the one you know who's the one Who's the one? Because in your minds and in your realities with the people around you, you are these superstars, you know? Um, and this rebrand is fantastic for you. It really is. Not everybody is happy about the rebrand, I will say. There's a very held back energy to this reading where the cards don't really want to come out. And it feels like something or someone is very triggered by your like pizzazz your charm your ability to pull people in if there's someone that your charm has pulled in that's feeling very neglected right now they're coming up really strong so that might be someone that you want to quickly take care of and just get them out of the way um explain to them what's really going on going on uh perhaps you know if you do really like them, throw them a bone, but if not, just try and explain to them that they might just be collateral damage and that you didn't mean for them to get in their feelings so much. But say something, say something. So the other thing that we're exploring for you in July is the idea of the psychocybernetic settings and which one truly um, keeps you from feeling good about yourself. You have some core belief that keeps you from feeling really good about yourself. And we're trying to figure out what it could be. It's just one thing, one or two things probably. It's easy if you want to try it now. You can start shuffling. I'll keep, you can not pay attention to the shuffling.
So whatever these unhealthy beliefs are that you have about yourself, they're going to come to the forefront, but in a way that you can deal with them. They've been back there for a long time. You kind of know what they are, but never to a full extent have you allowed yourself to look at them. And this month you will. It's not always pleasant, but it's just so hard to get a handle on these grown-up things that you need to you know get in order right now without knowing what you're really like and what you're really bringing to the table it's really really hard to know how much to pour when you don't know how big your cup is you have to know yourself to be able to bring your best self to whatever you're doing right so everything that mars thinks is going to keep you from doing that everything that mars thinks is unhealthy everything that mars thinks is out of balance everything that seems jaded and old and shady all of it mars comes in and kicks it all out and at first this is very refreshing you're very happy about it it's a big change but you're very happy about it and as time progresses this can be really really beneficial really beneficial because what mars energy is going to do is it's going to one rebalance your relationships and the power dynamics you've got and two, it's going to make you that much more straightforward and that much more poignant in your communication because you're not trying to well simply you're not trying to get people to like you and when Virgo isn't trying to get people to like them everybody likes them because it's just so funny you guys, when you're just yourselves, are so, so, so funny. Okay, so we have the Ten of Pentacles, the Four of Wands, the Eight of Swords, the World. Let me just show you. And then we have the Five of Wands and the Tower. Ah, and the Seven of Cups. Okay, let's make some sense of it. So, the Ten of Pentacles and the Four of Wands is saying, you know, you have the ability to go in an entirely new direction right now if you want to. You can be something new. You don't have to take the sadness of the past with you. You don't have to carry the burden of the world on your shoulders. You can easily move into a new life right now if you want to. I don't know how strong your stomach is and if you can actually do that, but you could do it. Okay, and then this new direction leads us to this balance that's, you know, it's really obvious where in your life the imbalance exists. It's really obvious when it comes to uh, peace of mind when it comes to sleep when it comes to interactions with friends you are lacking that emotional balance and you can feel at times um, how it's getting on top of you how it's you know the cloud the smoke is filling up the room there's it's not even that you can't really see or you think they're all monsters soon you won't be able to see anything at all The thing about this Seven of Cups and the Tower and the Five of Wands is that the more open and honest you are about what you're doing, the less culpable you are later because you're just an open, stressed out book. You have no idea what's going on. Hmm. Let's get into it. I love you. Let's look at these cards. 
Oh, there is a meetup going on in LA on 7-9. There's a meetup in Oakland on 7-7. The tickets are linked below. You can bring a friend. Um, there is a link for private readings below as well. And if you want to take a look at the cards, there is a Vimeo, a Patreon subscription, and an instant video link can be sent to your inbox if that's what you would prefer. Uh, and that's it. And that's all, folks. Love you. Let's look at these cards.